the sperms introduced into the female vagina swim up the cervix enter uterus and finally reach ampulla introduction of sperms in cervix is known as insemination now you recall that ovum released from the ovary also reaches ampulla it is necessary that introduction of sperm and release of ovum to reach ampulla is synchronized only then fertilization can occur and only then pregnancy can occur what is fertilization fusion of sperm with an ovum the site of fertilization is ampulla of fallopian tube now there are two problems associated with this problem one is ovum is released before maturation you recall when the ovum is released it is still in the secondary oocyte stage meiosis 2 is not yet complete so the nucleus in the ovum is not yet haploid the second problem is ovum is surrounded by corona radiata now corona radiata protects the oocyte as it travels along the fallopian tube to reach ampulla this layer is difficult to penetrate and the sperm uses the enzyme hyaluronidase to break it this enzyme is present in the acrosome of sperm but the amount of hyaluronidase in one sperm is not enough to break down the corona radiata many sperms contribute to breaking it down finally only one sperm enters the oplasm or the cytoplasm of the ovum or the secondary oocyte if you recall the ovum has two layers corona radiata and zona pellucida inside the zona pellucida is the larger secondary oocyte with the nucleus in the process of division arrested at metaphase 2 and a smaller polar body the entry of sperm causes two kinds of changes as the sperm cell membrane fuses with the cell membrane of secondary oocyte the nucleus of secondary oocyte completes its division it forms the haploid egg nucleus or ooted and a second polar body entry of sperm also changes zona pellucida to make it harder and impenetrable for other sperms so that after entry of one sperm a second one cannot enter if it were to happen normal development will not occur finally the haploid nucleus of the ovum and the sperm fuse together to form the zygote as this zygote continues its journey towards uterus mitosis starts 2 4 8 and 16 cell stages are formed these mitotic divisions are known as cleavage once the single cell zygote is formed it starts to undergo mitotic divisions and these divisions are known as cleavage now this leads to formation of cells which are known as blastomeres the 8 to 16 cell stage is known as morula now morula is a solid ball of cells after another 5 days of cleavage this solid ball develops a central cavity known as blastocoel or blastocyst cavity the cells will get arranged on the periphery of this cavity and this hollow ball is known as blastocyst so the entire structure with the cavity is known as blastocyst and the cavity is known as blastocyst cavity or simply blastocoel the cells with in this hollow ball are arranged on the periphery of the cavity as these cleavages are occurring the structure is also continuously moving towards uterus where it will be implanted the blastocyst has a unique structure that helps it in becoming implanted in the uterus now let's see what this unique structure is 
before we proceed further let's just define implantation implantation is attachment of blastocyst to the endometrium now to understand implantation let's just go back to the image of the blastocyst now the cells in the blastocyst are arranged on the periphery there are two types of cells that you can see the outer cell layer which is shown in purple is known as trophoblast this is the one which will help in implantation and then there is this inner cell mass known as embryoblast that will form the embryo now as this blastocyst reaches the endo uh, the uterus and gets in touch with the endometrium of the uterus it attaches to the endometrium cells of the endometrium start to grow around the trophoblast and this embryo is then implanted or embedded in the wall of the uterus or in the endometrium so you can see this is the blastocyst approaching the uterus it comes in contact with the endometrium of the uterus and finally the cells of endometrium grow around the trophoblast and the blastocyst gets implanted in the uterine wall and this event occurs around 7 to 10 days after fertilization with this we come to the end of today's session here are a few questions for your revision try solving them wish you all the best bye bye